Hello, this is Valentina Giannella and today I'm reading an excerpt from my book, We Are All Greta. It's a, it's a small book about climate change explained to a young audience. Let's imagine for a moment that solving the problem of climate change is like crossing a river with a very strong current without being washed away or falling in. We first need to stem the flow drastically lowering the level of power of the water. We then need to quickly place a line of rocks along the bottom, one after the other, to form a safe walkway to the other side. Mission accomplished. Now let's transfer this image to the strategy for combating climate change, which, of course, is infinitely more complicated. According to scientists, the first thing to do is to stop the stream of carbon emissions in order to reach a balance of zero as soon as possible, preferably by 2030. Without this, any other strategy is doomed to failure. It would be overwhelmed, much like our explorers on the riverbank, by the power of the greenhouse effect caused by rising concentrations of CO2. As Greta has pointed out, we have to leave the fossil fuels where they are, in the ground. Once the flow has been tamed, the bridge strategy should be implemented immediately, one stone after another. Once we have sought, found and prepared the right stones, it needs to be done soon. If we stop using fossil fuels, we will need alternatives very quickly. In this case, the bridge would be the United Nations Sustainable Development Agenda and the stones are the individual actions to achieve the plan's objective. Investing in the implementation of renewable energy sources, reducing consumption and the production of polluting waste, recycling, protecting the marine environment, developing sustainable methods of agriculture and animal rearing, changing our eating habits, and fighting poverty. Just to name a few. Only by building a solid bridge with all these stones can the nations of the world finish the task. Science has now asserted in every language on earth that this is the only possible way forward. So the next question is, who is dealing with it? Who will block the flow and collect the stones needed to get everyone to the other side safe and sound? According to the IPCC, international cooperation is a critical enabler with industry, civil society and scientific institution. So what does this actually mean? International cooperation is the leadership without which nothing can happen. Countries must find ways to support one another in pursuing this common goal. The developed countries must help their developing counterparts to cut emissions without falling behind in their socio-economic growth, which will cause additional problems to domestic and global equilibrium alike. The worlds of finance and research, both public and private, will have to think in terms of good of the international community, not of single nations or individual investors. Only by working together we will manage to block the torrent and build the bridge. Civil society, this means us. We are citizens of a world that is falling ill, a world of people who have left it very late to start thinking we should perhaps find a way of escaping to the other riverbank, but luckily also word of millions of young people who have raised their voices in response to greatest global call. It would be fantastic if this new generation were to put into practice and teach adults too what is required in everyday life to reach the other bank in safety. They have already started. The hashtag MyClimateAction features in thousands of tweets, Instagram stories and Facebook posts with initiative ideas and tricks to promote sustainable development. Science, technology, innovation and industry are the other key ingredients. Scientists must continue to study methods, 
reliable project results and point the way for governments, investors and citizens. Industry must put the interest of the planet ahead of any personal concern. Greta has been crystal clear in underlining this point. Our biosphere is being sacrificed so that rich people in countries like mine can live in luxury. It is the suffering of the many which pay for the luxuries of the few. We need to focus on equity.